Thank you for joining today. We wanted to see the best of Radha Dambuda, Radha Mata, Radha Shamsata Kashmira, Bhal Gopal, Kuhunita Aishila Prabhupada, and assemble to Guru Maharaj and assemble to Uris. So, um, we wanted to set the scene of uh, Dhammuda Leela and um, let's go through uh, the appearance, slowly go through the appearance. So, today we'll do a little bit. Why does the Lord appear in this material world? Well, Two good reasons. To reclaim us, the fallen conditioned souls, and to perform wonderful pastimes. Now we know there are other reasons why he comes, because he says that in the Bhagavad, in the Bhagavad Gita, to destroy the uh, demoniac forces and to reestablish the Dharma. But the primary reasons why he comes are these two. He wants us back in the spiritual world. And he wants to perform some amazing pastimes which happens here. So, um, this is a verse which uh, explains this uh, reason for him coming. Janma karma chame devyam evan yo veti tattva taha tyattva dehan puna janma naeti mameti sorjana Translation, one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world attains my eternal abode or origin. So, the pastimes that we are going to talk about are spiritual. They're not mundane. They don't belong to this world. They belong to the spiritual world. And the Lord, He is all spiritual. So, He appears and He performs these fantastic pastimes, which are actually um, very, very unique in their sweetness. He appears once in the day of Brahma. So he doesn't appear often. Once in a day of Brahma is a long period of time. So um, he doesn't appear every Kali Yuga. Oh, every Dwapa Yuga, sorry. Only once um, in a thousand Dwapa Yuga does he appear. So it's a long wait um, once he's gone, and once he's appeared. And same with Chaitanya. He appears straight after Krishna. And again, he doesn't appear. Uh, he only appears once in the day of Brahma. So he appeared at the end of the last Dwapa Yuga over 5,000 years ago. We are very fortunate so that um, uh, the, the, the Lord, when he appears, it has such a huge impact on, on wherever he comes. And that impact lasts for a very long time. So we're still feeling the impact of his appearance. Because uh, by the Lord's mercy, we are able to engage in some sort of bhakti. So, this pastime of Dhammuda Lida is recorded in the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And Srila Prabhupada has very kindly provided this 10th canto and also he's provided the Krishna book, which is a summary of the 10th canto. So we can review the events that led up to Dhamma Leela. And that's mainly from the Krishna book. So this is Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, 9th chapter, one, verse 1 and 2. So this is 9th chapter is where this Leela begins. And I think it covers three chapters or two chapters at least um, of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So it shows how important this pastime is. Two whole chapters is unheard of in the Bhagavatam, containing just one pastime. But anyway, let's uh, let's have a look at these verses. Shisuku vachapti ekada grihata sas dasisu yashoda nandana gehini karmantra niyukta su nirman mantha swayam dadi yani yani ha gitani Tadbala charitani cha tadi nirmantane kale smaranti tani agatyata. Translation Sri Sukhdev Goswami continued One day, when Mother Yashoda saw that all the maid servants were engaged in other household affairs, she personally began to churn the yogurt. While churning, she remembered the childish activities of hmm. Krishna. In her own way, she composed songs and enjoyed singing to herself about all those activities. Yes, yeah, so 
very interesting setting the scene it is the day of diwali which is the third uh, day of a series of dipavali festivals so what are these series of dipavali festivals five in total dan teras so that appears two days before diwali and this is the appearance of Danvantari and Lakshmi from the churning of the ocean. And Danvantari is um, the um, goddess, god of medicine, very important personality. Second day is Kali Chodas or Naraka Chaturdasi, which is the killing of the demon Naraka by Krishna. Third day is Diwali, Dipavali, and Lakshmi Puja as well. And it's the return of Lord Ram back to Ayodhya after 14 days in the forest. Fourth day is, the day after Diwali is Govardhan Puja. This, of course, began after Krishna commenced it in five uh, 5,000 years ago. Um, so this is very important festival, this Govardhan Puja. It's also New Year's Day for many, so it's a very auspicious day. <laughs> and then the fifth is Bhai Beach, Bhai Duj. Celebrates the bond between brother and sister. It started with Yamraj and Yamuna. These are the five important days uh, around the Pavali. Festivities had begun with the bridge buses. It's a cleansing and the renovating of their homes to receive Goddess Lakshmi. The decorating the doorways or with colorful designs, Langori. The gracing window sills with um, ghee lamps. So th these are very interesting fest uh, preparations for the festival. It was early morning, this is on the day of Diwali, and wonderful sounds of the birds chirping and the cows mooing were more delightful than the celestial Gayatri mantra chanted by the Brahmins. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is in Vrindavan. So uh, in Vrindavan, Krishna is attracted not by the mantras spoken by the Brahmins, but by the, the atmosphere in Vrindavan, which is very, very conducive for him to uh, enjoy different leelas and pastimes. We can transport ourselves into Nan Maharaj's palace. Yashoda Mai lay in bed with her transcendental son. So this is early morning on the day of Diwali. Slowly waking, she looked towards her beautiful child whose lotus-eyed eyes were closed in sleep. He looked like a blue lotus. She gently kissed his cheek. He didn't. He doesn't stir, but feels the indescribable touch of love personified, causing waves of waves of ecstasy through his spiritual body. So the Lord doesn't need anything. His atma, uh, atma rama, self satisfied, but. The devotees, when they are close to him, can give him such ecstasy. Even though he is self-satisfied, the devotees can give him, through their loving mood, great pleasure. Great pleasure. So this is uh, fascinating, really. And this is an interesting uh, picture of Krishna and Mother Yashoda. Some very qualified demigods and their equally qualified wives hovered in the sky, marveling to see the controller of unlimited universes in his original Gopa form, resting in the arms of his mother. The residence of Nand and Yashoda was spacious. So let's have a look at this residence. There were bedroom chambers filled marble tiled inlaid with precious jewels, opened onto a, an expansive balcony that overlooked the village of Gokul and beyond, which is Mahavan. 
This is where a lot of the past times of Krishna took place. Spacious wardrobe room replete, replete with silken clothes and priceless ornaments. There was a bath chambers, the kitchen and the pantry, stately reception rooms leading to the grand hall of 84 pillars. Chorasi Stamba, a version is present in to witness in Goku. So if we go to Goku, we will be able to check out the this place, the grand hall, 84 pillars. There you go. Then there's the inner courtyard and adjoining gardens and courtyard. So there's quite a uh, big place that Nand Maharaj and Yashoda Mai lived. Yashoda Mai rises and goes to her bath chamber where there is only one of her maids waiting to assist her. The other palace servants were preparing for the poverty. So they didn't come that morning. They were uh, allowed to do their preparations at home. But there was one maidservant who helped Yashoda Mai. Yashoda Mai was informed by her maid that everybody was looking forward to making this Dipavali celebration special. Because now Krishna is old enough to relish such events. He was two at that time. And all the Vijayasis want to please him. They have spontaneous love for Krishna. After dressing herself, Yashoda Mai's maid ornamented and garlanded her, noting that goddesses fall from their airplanes in envy to see the beauty of this queen. She was extraordinarily beautiful. Restless for the service of her son, Yashoda Mai cut her grooming short and followed by her assistant, hurried into the courtyard below, where three golden churns of milk were waiting. She intended to use this milk as follows. So, half of the milk would be used for yogurt, for tomorrow's butter. The remaining half for sweets by boiling and condensing. Nan Baba had 900,000 cows, some of which were very rare due to the superlative quality of their milk, which was creamy, tasty, and aromatic. So the, the milk had different aromas, according to the Gomata that gives the milk. Some is very thick, and some cow's milk smells like jasmine, rose, and other flavors. There are different flowers, sorry. There are different varieties of taste and smell in milk, according to the cows. To make their milks, their, their special milk, even more special, these cows were carefully pastured in a divine meadow whose grass was soft, juicy, and fragrant. Some Gopa suggested that the seeds of this field originated from heaven. So they had a special fields for of beautiful, luscious grass for Gomata. Padma Gandhi was one such cow famed throughout Braj because her milk had the aroma of the red, red lotus. The milk of these cows is delivered daily to Yashoda Mai, who understands which milk has come from which group of cows and separates it all when it comes to Nandapavan. With some milk she makes sweet, with some she makes paneer, with some she makes sweet rice, depending on the day and occasion. She arranges everything perfectly. Generally, the maids would make the various milk preparations. However, Yashoda Mai, having heard so many complaints against her dear son <coughs> from the elderly gopis, about his pastimes as Mahancho, although she could not still believe that her darling son would do that. So she was thinking, oh, maybe 
it's possible he, he may possibly have become addicted to stealing the butter produced by the neighbors. So she was thinking perhaps she would get the maids to boil the milk and make sweets and sweet rice and whatever. Maybe they're not doing good enough job. So she decided today, I'm going to take on everything. If he had been has been naughty, then to break this habit, she was thinking that obviously the maids had become careless whilst making the preparations. They cannot be trusted as they seem to be regularly burning the milk. Hence the reason why my dear son goes elsewhere. To break this habit, she was thinking that she must entice him by providing butter that is far superior to that which he can get elsewhere. And this is a fact. When she produces the makan, it is uh, imbued with so much love that Krishna becomes subordinate if he eats too much of Mother Yashoda's makan. So he he doesn't have so much because he doesn't want to be goody two shoes. That meant that she will make all the food preparations herself with all the love that she has for Krishna. As a queen, always accompanied by her servants and guests, it showed that Mai never really had the opportunity to focus on cooking for Krishna. However, today she had the opportunity. Why? because the servants were occupied at their homes due to Diwali preparations. Also, Nanda Baba was taking Rohini and Balaram to his brother Upananda's village, which is Sahara. Normally, Nanda Baba would be attending Indra Puja in Goku. But this year, his younger brother, Sunanda, would supervise these ceremonies. So, Nanda Baba... Uh, was not at home, and nor was Rohini or Balaram. Yashodamaya was pleased also that she would be able to spend time alone with Krishna, which didn't happen often. There was always something going on. Yashodamaya decided that she would churn the yogurt herself and watch her, the stove at the same time, because at the stove they put the milk to boil while Krishna was still sleeping. There he is, sweet Krishna. So she poured the milk into a large pot on the stove. And from the yogurt that was prepared for the, pre the previous day, she spooned the best part into a churn near the door of the bed chamber. From there, so she positioned herself so she could see the milk she could see Krishna and she would churn at the same time. From there, she can see the boiling milk and Krishna as well, who is in bed at the same time. And she would be able to churn at the same time. Mm. Okay, so we can continue tomorrow. Any questions, any comments? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Yeah, just tell me the difference between uh, Vaikuntha and Guluka Brindavan. Hmm. I'm a Bit bit confused yeah. about that. Ah, okay. Yes, it's obviously they're both in the spiritual world, so in one sense there's no difference. But if we look at the the mellows and the relationships that the devotees have with the Lord, there's quite a big difference. In Vaikuntha, the relationship is simply one of servant-master. So master is Vishnu, everybody else is the servant. And that is the mood of worship for the devotees in Vaikuntha. But in Golok Bindavan, it extends much more. There is that element of seva, service, is as servant. But there are four other or three other rasas which actually are predominant, much more than the servant-master relationship. 
So one is um, the relationship between Gopas and Krishna, friendship. Another is the parenthood of Yashoda Mai and Nan Maharaj towards Krishna, which does not exist in Vaikuntha because <laughs> uh, Narayan does not have a father, a, a father figure. Mm -hmm. And the final rasa, which is not present again, not fully present in Vaikuntha, is the Madhurya Ras, the relationship between the gopis and Krishna. So the difference is in Golok Bindavan, there are more different types of relationships with Krishna than in Vaikuntha. In Vaikuntha, it's only servant master. In Golok Bindavan, there are many, many other different types of relationships. The three I've described are the main ones, but there are unlimited ways to uh, um, associate with the Lord. So that's the difference between Vaikuntha and Golok Bindavan. Does that make sense, uh, Sitaram Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Very good. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. So let's stop there. Uh, Damudalila ki jai. Ishudamai ki jai.